Welcome back to the second installment of Strange and Interesting Fish. In this video, we're exploring seven different interesting species. I'll cover their size, appearance, native range, conservation status, and of course, the unique traits that make them stand out. There are several caves in the Sierra del Abra region of Mexico that hold a truly astonishing fish. The Mexican blind cave fish is a cave-dwelling form of the Mexican tetra. This eerie little fish lives in total darkness and has no functional eyes. Under its chin are nerves and sensory organs that help it feel its environment. It uses a well-developed lateral line system and a keen sense of smell to navigate and find food in pitch black waters. It evolved loss of eyes and pigment as an adaptation to cave life, yet has heightened other senses. It exhibits schooling behavior even in darkness. Adult cavefish are quite small, about 3 to 4 inches long. They are slender, laterally compressed by shape being pale, pinkish, white, or silvery in color with pale or transparent fins. Native populations of this form are only found in certain limestone caves of Mexico. However, the surface populations of normal Mexican tetra range into southern Texas and New Mexico. The Mexican cavefish is not considered endangered, but is surprisingly a fish of least concern. It has actually become famous in science and in the pet trade, and is often kept in aquariums. The Rio Grande cichlid, also known as the Texas cichlid, is a large colorful member of the cichlid family. While there are hundreds of different cichlid species, the Rio Grande cichlid is the only cichlid native to the United States. This fish is native to the warm rivers of the lower Rio Grande basin in Texas and northeastern Mexico. In Texas, they originally occurred only in the Rio Grande and Nueces drainages, but there are now populations established in several central Texas rivers and even reservoirs. This fish is hardy in warm water but can't survive long in cold temperatures, likely dying in anything below 49 degrees Fahrenheit. Adults are olive to brown with vivid cream and turquoise spots all over their sides. Faint vertical bars appear on the lighter colored individuals. And like many other cichlids, breeding males grow a pronounced hump on the forehead. Both dorsal and anal fins taper long past the tail base. They have 5 to 7 spines in the anal fin. These fish grow to be about 10 to 13 inches long. The conservation status of this fish is of least concern. In fact, the Rio Grande cichlid is popular with anglers as a feisty fighting fish and is even considered good eating. I just find this fish very interesting because its tropical appearance is very unique for fish found inland in the United States. You could say that the bowfin is a living fossil. It's the last survivor of an ancient fish lineage dating back over a hundred million years. Bowfins have long cylindrical bodies, sometimes with a dark mottled pattern, and a distinctive long dorsal fin that runs most of the body's length. The head is broad with a large upturned mouth full of sharp teeth and a bony plate under the chin. Bowfins are usually olive colored with dark net like marks. Males also develop a black eye spot with an orange rim on the tail base. Male bowfin can exhibit some incredible bluish green colors during the breeding season, usually these colors being most noticeable on the fins, but also inside of the mouth. Bowfin are a large fish that can reach over 30 inches in length. Females typically grow larger than the males. Their native range is across eastern North America, from the St. Lawrence River and Great Lakes down through the Mississippi Basin, also existing east along the Atlantic and Gulf Coastal Plain. They usually live in weedy backwaters, oxbow lakes, and sluggish streams. Many anglers appreciate bowfin as a tough fighter and a unique predator. While bowfin aren't federally listed, there are certain areas where populations are at risk. Unfortunately, bowfin can be misidentified for their invasive lookalike, the northern snakehead, and are often killed as a result. If you live in an area where bowfin or northern snakehead exist, I would highly suggest familiarizing yourself with the identification of both these species so that bowfin aren't mistakenly killed. The fathead minnow is a small common fish. It is native to streams and ponds across much of North America from central Canada down into the southern US. 
and they have since been introduced in many other areas, greatly broadening their range. Fathead minnows tolerate polluted or low oxygen water that other fish can't handle and are a common forage fish. Adults are only about 2 to 3 inches long. Now, what makes this fish interesting to me is the physical change that males undergo during breeding. First looking like a very ordinary fish with a basic olive brown color and a dark lateral stripe and a pale underbelly, the whole apparent structure of the head changes to be round and blunt and turns black in color. Perhaps even more intriguing, they develop hard spikes or breeding tubercles on the head and fins. During breeding, males build and defend nests under rocks or logs. They exhibit vigorous parental care, protecting their eggs until they hatch. I recently had a privilege of observing this behavior as I watched a male fathead minnow aggressively attack several sunfish venturing close to his nest. It was kind of amusing to watch. Fatheads are also a classic lab test animal for toxicity studies because of their hardiness and, of course, are of a least concerned status. The least brook lamprey is one of the smallest lamprey species on Earth, being only 3 to 7 inches as adults. Lampreys are jawless, eel-like fish. While many lampreys are parasitic, blood-sucking nightmare fuel, the brook lamprey is non-parasitic. In fact, as an adult, it does not feed at all. Instead, it uses its specialized sucking mouth to excavate shallow depressions in the stream bed for spawning. After a successful spawn, the lamprey larvae burrow deep into sandy creek bottoms and filter feed on tiny particles of waste and debris for four to six years. They then transform into three to seven inch adults just in time for the spawn to repeat the process. Adults have an elongated slim body without scales or pelvic fins. The one dorsal fin is split into two parts, the front and rear lobes. Just like other lamprey species, it has a round sucker-like mouth but no jaws. And this lamprey species lacks those sharp, intimidating teeth that many other lampreys have. Least brook lampreys live in small cool streams across eastern North America from the Gulf states north to Ontario. Throughout the majority of its range, it is considered a species of least concern. The brook stickleback, sometimes called the five-spine stickleback, is a little armored fish that averages only one to two and a half inches long. The body is laterally compressed, flattened side to side. It is a scaleless fish, but it bears a row of small bony plates along each of its sides. It has four to six sharp spines on its back in front of the main dorsal fin, similar to other sticklebacks. Non-breeding males and females are olive or greenish with faint speckles and stripes on the sides. Breeding males turn darker, nearly black. Brook sticklebacks are native across cool vegetated waters of northern North America, from Nova Scotia and the Great Lakes region throughout much of Canada and the northern U.S. They prefer shallow edges of lakes, ponds, or slow streams with lots of aquatic plants. They are common and not endangered in any way. While this is a common fish to some, I just think that its unique armor build and spiked back is really cool, especially for such a small fish. The humpback chub is one of North America's rarest and most endangered fish. Adults grow about 15 to 20 inches long and can weigh several pounds. They have a strange looking hump on their backs just behind the head, hence the name. They have a streamlined body and a deeply forked tail. Their coloration is olive gray on top, fading to silver sides and a white belly. The hump is thought to act as a hydrodynamic rudder that helps the fish hold position in the swift, turbulent canyon waters where it evolved. Humpback chubs are endemic to the Colorado River basin. Historically, they lived in fast, rocky canyon sections of the Colorado River and its big tributaries. However, today, only a few remnant populations remain in the upper Colorado River, in Colorado and Utah, as well as populations in the Grand Canyon area in northern Arizona. These fish spawn in the spring in eddies and slow pockets near boulders, and the males develop tiny breeding tubercles during that season. Humpback chubs can live over 30 years, but they do not mature until they are 2 to 3 years old. This species is federally endangered and has been listed as such since 1967. 
Dams, non-native predators, and habitat changes have drastically reduced its numbers over the years. Conserving the humpback chub has been a high-priority effort among conservationists. In fact, due to these efforts, it was considered to be downlisted to only threatened after recent population increases in the Grand Canyon. However, that still hasn't happened just yet. In summary, the humpback chub is a remarkable survivor of North America's wild rivers, an ancient fish shaped by the whitewater. Its plight reminds us how human changes like creating dams can endanger even once common native species. I hope you enjoyed this video. There are a lot more episodes to come in this series, so please make sure to subscribe as a way to support me in making more videos like this one. Thanks, and I'll see you on the next one.